Hello, School Transportation Nation. Welcome back to the podcast. Me and Ryan Gray. It's brought to you by TransFinder, the leader in school bus routing. We have a tech tip from IC Bus and a green tip from the Propane Education Research Council. Ryan, glad to be back. Ready to talk about the uh, top news headlines of the week. Yeah, absolutely. And talking about, uh, you know, conference season, um, that's under full swing now. Uh, you know, we had the California Association for School Transportation Officials conference about a week or so ago, Tony. So that was really kind of the the first, aside from that NSTA midwinter meeting that you and I attended in San Diego in January, but really one of the first state conferences. I know uh, Texas has uh, one of their special needs uh, conferences, Texas Association for People Transportation coming up. And then we're off and running, Tony. It's kind of that that full swing. What was cool about the Casto conference, that was the first time in three years since the pandemic that everyone was able to meet for that state conference in person. So I know uh, a couple of us at STN were out at their business managers uh, forum last fall. Um, but yeah, so Tony, you know, and of course, with that, we have STN Expos coming up. Um, so the team here is hard at work um, getting ready for those. I know that we just passed our super early bird uh, deadline for for Indy. So uh, should be this week, Tony, have some more details going up on stnexpo.com forward slash east with our, you know, more uh, details on the agenda. Yeah, I've been working real close with the team, getting the website uh, all updated with all our networking events. We got our welcome party at Howl at the Moon with the Safety Vision, really great there. We've got the trade show dialing out. Uh, we're almost sold out. It's uh, it's packed, lots of OEMs. We've got our Green Bus Summit that we're hosting in Indy for the first time. We've got uh, nine sponsors right now, going to probably be 10 by, the, uh, by next week. So uh, we'll have lots of energy providers, uh, consulting companies, infrastructure. OEMs. We got the green school bus ride and drive so people can enjoy different vehicles. They can try out uh, propane vehicles, electric vehicles, CNG, really get a, a good sense of maybe what the right fuel choice is for them. I know, Ryan, we've had a lot of uh, discussion about EPA and we've had a lot of discussion about uh, GHG regulations. There's been a lot of controversy. There's political jostling going on. You know, people saying, hey, it's too aggressive. It's going to cost uh, trucking districts money. It's just a really kind of controversial subject. Uh, we kind of just took it as once the EPA says we're doing it, we're moving full steam ahead. So I'm always curious how these things have long term implications. I know the Biden administration is pushing heavy towards um, reducing greenhouse gas emissions and and the EPA is kind of their arm to really implement some of those efforts, right? And mm -hmm. and we're seeing more adoption in electric school buses for sure in the school bus industry. Um, obviously, a little bit of cannibalization is going on in some of the alternative energy areas where we've seen like propane and CNG. And, and uh, I'm curious to see if that doesn't kind of balance out as diesel becomes more expensive for people to consume. So that might kind of upset the apple cart because uh, this industry, as you know, it's, it's been the same way forever. Diesel is king, right? It's just, it's really hard to dethrone diesel. Absolutely. And, you know, ever since the, the eighties, when, you know, some of you out there in school transportation nation land, remember when gasoline was king and certainly of course the last, you know, Certainly the last decade, we've seen gasoline come back on the market because diesel has gotten so expensive under these EPA regulations. And it was in the 80s in response to gasoline shortages and gasoline getting expensive that diesel came to the forefront in school buses and trucking and really ruled the roost for several decades. And we've just seen, again, those EPA regulations whittle away at that, making the technology more and more strict to reduce particulate matter, NOx, you know, all those smog forming elements. And it's been making the the engines, the systems, the vehicles more and more expensive. So coming to what you were discussing, the EPA's 2027 regs, which is going to be the strictest yet, um, that 0 0.02 grams per brake horsepower level of, of NOx emissions, which we know that propane and CNG, they already meet those, or at least some of the, the latest engines meet those requirements. Diesel does not. And, and certainly what we're seeing is this push towards zero emissions. Right now, for school bus anyways, that means battery electric. 
there is, you know, some, some discussion out there of hydrogen. You know, one of the OEMs, Pegasus uh, Specialty Vehicles, is looking to bring hydrogen to the market. But, there, you know, there, there still needs to be a lot proven out with how that will work. And, and we're still in that phase with electric, frankly. Uh, so there's a, a lot of anxiety around electric. Um, we've been talking about it. It's nothing new. You know, as, as Taylor Ekpatani, our associate editor, was uh, interviewing Al Karam at uh, Shenandoah Central School District in New York last week, he's one of the, the, the folks that's saying, hey, you know, we need to, to take our time here and really figure out how this is going to work. Not to say that we shouldn't eventually go to electric, but there's so many folks that are so vested in diesel. And just to, to flip the switch so immediately is really tough. And you know, we see that there are, are a lot of challenges out there and opportunities as well with electric. But you know, when you're looking at fleet maintenance and fleet management, there's a lot that goes into electric and the infrastructure. So uh, I reported on this uh, last month, there is actually an effort in the Senate afoot right now amongst uh, a coalition of Republicans who, of course, they now have the majority in the Senate. Well, Senator Deb Fisher, she introduced this Senate Joint Resolution 11, which is essentially trying to enact the Congressional Review Act, which is designed to limit the the powers of agencies. And, you know, it was really enacted a lot um, under President Obama with a lot of his executive orders to try to to, to draw back some of these uh, these rules that went in effect, and you know by going around Congress, so this uh, group of about you know three dozen senators led by uh, Senator Fisher, she's of course from Nebraska, they're really aiming at uh, the implementation of this of this EPA 2027 rule, which by the way it, it goes into effect Tony March 27th, so that's just what two and a half weeks away. So you know what they're really saying is that this is is um, hurtful to jobs. It's, it's going to be increasing the costs of trucks as well as buses. Senator Fisher actually spoke on the Senate floor last week about this resolution. And here's some of what she had to say. The Biden administration, well, they want to saddle hardworking drivers with an onerous regulation that's going to increase vehicle costs. And it's going to deal a serious blow to good paying jobs. But the EPA's emissions rule wouldn't actually accomplish its stated purpose of cleaning up our environment. The EPA itself estimates that the technology required to meet this new rule standards will cost between approximately $2,500 and $8,500 per vehicle. Yeah, really interesting comments, Ryan. I mean, clearly there's opposition to this. And as a result, you have different people on different sides of the aisle that are promoting one way or the other. But at the end of the day, this is really what's best for the kids is is cleaner emissions, right? And we've seen a bigger push towards this with the electric school bus. I don't think really it's going to slow us down, but it's definitely, you know, we've heard comment from many executives about diesel being kind of a, almost like a bridge fuel to electric. And the OEMs are still predicting over the next five to 10 years, you know, a third to half of all school buses produced are going to be electric, right? Maybe we see a disruption in the market that changes that. Uh, but I feel like, like you said, we're still in that courting phase. Mm -hmm. We're still in that dating phase. We're in that early stage of like, hey, people are trying one or two electric buses. You know, are they there? They've tried propane. It's tried and true. There's over 20,000 deployments, a lot of propane on the market. So everybody's kind of making their choices. I know there's people that they only have diesel mm -hmm. and they don't want to switch. And it's uh, it's good. it's going to be late in the game before they do. And, and what's interesting about diesel, I, we've talked about this a number of times. Renewable diesel, and, and you know, we see a lot of that in California. That's great for California, but you know, and, and we we see it in Oregon more and more in Washington State. Uh, but what about the rest of the country? 
right? Um, it was pretty interesting. Um, recently, I uh, I found out that BP, you know, British Petroleum, they now go by BP. They actually have an initiative uh, right now where they're looking to recycle plastics into renewable fuel. Uh, so this is actually at their Whiting, Indiana refinery, you know, specifically looking to turn some of this into renewable diesel. And this would be a, na- a national uh, footprint. Um, so again, th- this is going to take time. And I know Nesty, which is the world's largest renewable uh, refiner, they're still mostly in Europe, um, but they're they have a footprint now in the U.S. That's going to take time, though, right? So I think that um, you know what I've said is folks are still today buying or at least you know, putting in orders for diesel, right? <laughs> they might not receive it for twelve months. But and that's a whole another issue that we've talked about that's that's complicating things. But folks are still operating diesel and they're going to be operating diesel for the next 10, 15 years or longer. So what is that bridge? What you know, what are our options so that we can be taking, uh, you know, those logical steps and in, in what makes sense business wise as well as the the health of our children, the health of our communities, the health of our drivers and our technicians that are operating these vehicles, um, that we can get to this net zero. It's not going to happen overnight, but certainly, you know, the the trains pulling out of the station, hop on board. Um, it's just, you know, right now there's still a lot of that, obviously a lot of that political wrangling right now. So it will really be interesting to see what happens with Joint Resolution 11, um, if anything. I mean, again, there's not much time before this EPA rule goes into effect. Hey, perfect segue, Ryan, right to our green tip brought to you by the Propane Education Research Council. They want to talk to you about propane It's energy for everyone. Did you know that school buses fueled by propane can help you reduce emissions in your community while saving you money? Propane school buses have a lower average carbon intensity than electric school buses over their lifetime by more than half. And they emit up to 96% less nitrogen oxide than diesel buses. All of this from fleets with the lowest total cost of ownership It's no wonder propane is the most widely used alternative fuel in the school bus industry. You guys can learn more at betterourbuses.com. That's betterourbuses.com. All right, you know, another really great topic we saw in the March issue of STN was efficiency and optimization, Ryan. The the articles were really good this month. Uh, If you guys haven't picked up the issue, make sure you go to stnonline.com and do that. You may have seen uh, Zonar launch their new on route, which is uh, on the front cover of the magazine, uh, talking a lot about turn-by-turn directions. We saw a lot about routing and how that's playing a big role in looking at how you address the drive shortage, right? And how you're deploying technology and AI. And we see a lot of that happening in the market where people may be considering more routing, student tracking, but we're also seeing the use of apps as how that makes everybody's life a little better, gives more visibility. But when you open up the kimono, you see all the data, everybody sees your flaws. There's always kind of challenges. So you really got to be prepared when you take on um, optimization to really understand that there's a big commitment to be able to do it. But you're going to be glad you did when push comes to shove. And guys, you know, this is really important that you really consider what your technology footprint is and that when you look at all the options out there, there's a lot. And you really got to make sense of it, but do your research, do your homework. It really does help you. It plays a part in the green conversation as well, because, you know, you're trying to reduce that amount of routes, reduce the amount of fuel you're using, maintenance on your vehicles. There's just a lot of benefits. So really consider that as part of your thing. Dive into that March issue. Tons of great content. Uh, Ryan and Taylor and the team have put together. Saw some stuff on cloud computing, uh, off-prem hosting versus on-prem hosting. So there's stuff in there as well. So a lot of great stories, Ryan, to, uh, to get into. Absolutely. Uh, check it out, stonline.com. If you head over to our magazine uh, section there up at the top, and you'll just click in there and read all about it. Got plenty of uh, articles coming this way this month as well. So just stay tuned. Awesome. Well, hey, guys, I'm going to drop a tech tip on you here. 
Brought to you by IC Bus. You're looking for ways to improve your on-time performance and reduce operating costs? All IC Bus CE Series school buses now come standard with factory-installed telematics devices, including a five-year connectivity subscription. Customers gain access to on-command connection, an industry-leading remote diagnostic solution, providing data that is visible and easy to understand and actionable. With OCC, your school district will have visibility to vehicle health and performance data at your fingertips, including EV-specific information like state of charge and estimated range. You guys can learn more about other standard capabilities of IC-connected vehicles at icbus.com. That's icbus.com. All right, guys, we have a really exciting surprise guest for you on the 150th episode of the STN Podcast Nation. Can't believe he's been with us the entire time since episode one. Transfinder's own CEO, President Antonio Civitella. We're excited to have him on the podcast. We'll be talking to him in just a second. All right, guys, I have our special surprise guest on the STN podcast today, Mr. Antonio Civitella, President and CEO of Transfinder. We're celebrating 150th episode of the STN podcast. Is that exciting? Amazing, Tony. It's exciting. Thank you for reaching out to me two years ago at this point, right? 2020, three years ago. That's, that's right. Three years ago, 2020. Uh, not 2010, but 2020, say, hey, we have some new things. And, of course, excited to be part of this. Uh, Tony and really everybody uh, at STN, uh, you guys are really rock stars and really keep everybody informed. This is exciting time. So congratulations, 150th episode. Wow. Yeah, really great milestone, some landmark stuff. I know Transfinders had some landmark events too, right? Plus has been celebrating its birthday for a couple of years now. And I think you have a big upgrade you just did on Service Finder, right? Is that something's coming soon? That it's coming soon. And by the way, speaking of Plus, before I jump to, to Service Finder, we're going to have a another birthday bash on April 6th. I think all of our clients will hear all about that. And it's really going to be the title – What's all the fuss about Plus? We're going to have a lot of fun with that. Plus turns officially three years old on April 6th. So we're going to have a little fun part with that. We're going to have a lot of clients talking about their experience and a lot of cool things. But another great product that is about to get released is Service Finder. It really is our third generation product of fleet maintenance just talked about with some people not that long ago, our very first platform was called TransFinder FM, Fleet Maintenance. That's before we went to whole rebranding name. So some of you out there remember like TransFinder FM. Then we came out with Service Finder, which is our second generation, which was cool. Got us really amazing functionality. And now the third generation, is it's a, it's a new look and feel that matches the whole plus family environment. And really it's one big platform. So this is really the big thing. It's called service finder. So it's coming up today. We had our first university class. It was a rehearsal. There were no clients in it, but I want to tell you, we're already getting prepared that when it gets released, we already have these training classes ready to go for our clients. Tone. So talk to me a little bit about, what service finder can do for people, right? So fleet maintenance software, intervals, PM, you know, preventative maintenance, doing those sorts of things. Obviously we've got different fuel types, uh, buses, electric buses, propane buses, clean diesel buses, doing maintenance on all those vehicles, setting all the parameters, the fields. What are some of the new things that people could expect from service finder? Like, could you give us a little peek behind the curtain? Like what, what's happening there? What is this new iteration? Well, this third generation product uh, really is modeled from our plus environment, which is unlimited, unlimited data, unlimited user fields. So really, this could be used from the nice compact size school district to the very large operations. And we know that maintaining your vehicles, a lot of it, it's, it's about making sure that you're doing things to prevent breakdowns, because we know that out-of-service vehicles are a 
bad news for for operations. So what can you do? And again, yeah, that just seems like, well, I don't need a software. I just have a piece of paper, a, a clipboard saying, yep, every 30 days, let's do those. Fine, do that. But I'm expecting that our clients are going to go to a whole other level to see the repair cost. At a certain point, are you spending more than you should on a certain vehicle? Maybe this is a time that you convert your fleet to maybe this is where when you're deciding which vehicles you're you're going to convert to electric well there might be a good reason why well maybe bus 12 we love it a lot of great memories with bus 12 but at this point we're spending more money than we need to on that vehicle let's replace that one with electric vehicle so i see a lot of this analysis going on tony that they're going to see which one is really costing us more money. And again, it's informed decisions that you could say, when does it need to be replaced? Excellent. And then in terms of like looking forward for a lot of people, mechanics are kind of in short supply. So they're trying to use technology to help bridge the gap a little bit of the mechanic shortage. So do you see your clients using service finder to help kind of achieve that? Well, the other part that as buses are becoming smarter and smarter, just really like vehicles that a lot of vehicles today that you bring into your dealer, most likely someone's not going to just listen to the motor. They're going to plug in a computer and get all that information. Well, all that's happening right now with, with buses and some of our technology partners, such as Zonar, they're able to read the engine information live. So that those type of defects, if there are some defects, it automatically creates these texts and really repair codes right in our software. So that at that point, instead of just saying, hey, what's going on? You you get a list of items that needs to be done on bus 99. Now you know these are all the issues. Yes, we do expect the drivers to report some of the incidents, especially during the pre and post inspections of the vehicle when you do the, the trips. But why not just say, if you know that the, the bus needs certain things, let's read it directly from the, the computer that's on the bus. So those are things that can just make life easier. Clearly, if the if there's a headlights are out or it's a crack, the driver is going to report that. But if the headlights not working and, and your onboard computer knows that, well, let's notify the mechanics that bus 99 got to take off of the road or maybe you could do it before you know, it gets on the road, fix the light, get it done. And now those are the efficient piece that uh, our software is going to help our clients. And again, what are we doing is make sure that you want to reduce any potential accidents that could be or injuries to to the passengers and really people on the road. Now, I know recently you were interviewed in the March issue of School Transportation News, and we were talking a little bit about the trend of on-prem versus off-prem hosting. Now, when we talk about uh, Plus and Service Finder, you know, you had told me a while back, hey, I'm seeing a big movement towards off-prem hosting versus people requiring it. And those are kind of little changes over time. And, you know, seeing the software increase, the usage, um, you know, are those trends you see continuing in the future? Definitely. And by the way, I appreciate that you used on-prem, off-prem instead of the cloud. That's actually a good one, Tony, because I feel like people are talking about the cloud. So that was part of my my beef with like, what's up with this clock? Can we just call it what it is? So I love it. So thank you for doing that. Uh, it sounds like we're all on the same page now. Good. <laughs> well, yes. On-prem means too much. To me, uh, it was made sense to have on-prem solutions uh, in the past because really software companies like ourselves didn't have the scale model to get things really on the cloud. We all do that now. And I think this makes sense for us to whenever whenever there's a, a new update, what happens is overnight things go right, and sometimes they don't go great. I just want to tell you, but expected that things go amazing. All of a sudden, tomorrow morning, or really during the weekends, is typically when we upgrade our our clients' software. They are up, they log in, and it's new version. It just it happened auto magically, 
and it really is magic and it is automatic. So yeah, those, that's the trend because we expect uh, features functionality to be increased. Uh, the volume and the frequency is going to go up tremendously now with this new version of Service Finder because we want to get want to get the feedback from our clients and we also want to make sure that this product, Tony, works with again the compact size school district, the small ones, and also the very large ones. And again, what's a robust product? We want to make sure that data is able to come into it, flow in. And I'm positive that our clients want to get this data that's massive database. It's actually Service Finder database is much more complicated or complex than our routing database. It really has so many pieces are in there. So a successful fleet maintenance product, not only are you getting data coming into it, but I expect it to also go out, you know, get data, I export it out to maybe your financial systems for budgeting purposes, your cost analysis, all that. So yeah, a lot in there. Excellent. Well, Tony, thank you so much for jumping on the podcast, giving us a little peek about Service Finder and some of the trends we're seeing in the technology world. Thanks also for being a great partner, being with us since 150 episodes. It's crazy to say, but yeah, man. Love it. Love it. Wow. We're looking forward to the next 150 episodes, right? That's right. That's right. Thank you so much, Tony and everybody. Wonderful. Hey, excellent episode, guys. Appreciate you coming on, talking to us, Mr. Ryan Gray. Thank you so much. Always great insights, keeping us up to date on all the legislative happenings going on out in the school transportation universe. Thanks to TransFinder, ICBus, and the Propane Education Research Council for being our sponsors of the episode this week. So glad you guys could be with us. Guys, make sure to support our sponsors. Go check them out on their websites. Give them a call. Guys, visit stnonline.com for everything happening in the school transportation industry. That March issue is out as well. Go check it out on the website. Also, don't forget to register for STN Expo Indianapolis and STN Expo Reno this summer. Go to stnexpo.com for all the details. Remember, you can subscribe, listen to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to pods. Nation, we love you. We'll see you next week. 